Floss Tube, welcome to Bumble Stitches. My name's Nicola, this is my Floss Tube episode number 15 and today is Sunday the 9th of May. I'm coming to you from the east coast of England and it's a beautiful day and I believe it's Mother's Day in some parts of the world so if you are a mum um, and it's Mother's Day where you are, I hope you're having a really lovely day today. So stitchy friends, it's been two weeks since my last floss tube and if you're coming back as a returning viewer, a very warm welcome to you. And if you're new, because there've been quite a few new subscribers, um, a very warm welcome to you. I hope you enjoy um, catching up with me on what I've been up to in the past couple of weeks. There have been quite a few um, new subscribers and uh, there's details of the giveaway that I ran in the last episode a little bit later on. Uh, I wanted to give you a little bit of a life update before I get into all the good stuff. Um, a lot has happened in the last two weeks since we spoke last. Notably, I've had an interview for a job, been hired for the job and have actually done my first week, which was last week. So a major change to what's going on here um, in my life. And yes, I'm still trying to get my head round the fact that I'm back to work full time and juggling all the things that I want to do and I'm sure as so many of you um, will be in that um, same position as well it's it's difficult isn't it to get all the things done that you want to do so forgive me if um, I don't have quite as much to show you as I normally would I've been really exhausted I've been coming home from work and of course trying to learn um, it's a completely different industry than I'm used to working in so it's a huge learning curve for me, meeting new people, um, learning new systems, new products and all that kind of thing has left me pretty frazzled by the end of the day. So whereas normally I'd settle down for an evening stitching, um, I've been really tired and having to sort of head to bed early. So I'm sure that will settle down in the weeks to come and I'll get back into my groove and, and get um, back up to speed with some of my crafting. So that's what's been happening with me and I hope um, everything's well with you all as well. Also had my second COVID jab uh, on Wednesday, which was a relief to finally get that and feel very privileged um, to have had that second vaccine. So hopefully you're all on track with yours as well um, and we can all start getting a little bit back to um, some sort of normality in our lives. And start meeting up with people again which would be lovely so that's the the brief sort of life update of what's been happening with me um, a couple of little tiny admin things that I just wanted to um, make you aware of obviously with starting the new job um, my time has been a little bit sparse to say the least and I'm a little bit behind with a few things if you were waiting on a giveaway prize from me um, from the past couple of episodes they have all been posted out now so uh, if you're if you're a UK winner they should be sort of either with you or getting to you in the next couple of days and if you're overseas then just please be aware that they are on their way to you so apologies for that if you were waiting um, the other thing is there's a couple of emails that I need to get back to people on so I'm trying to work my way through everything um, but I know that you're all super understanding and um, I appreciate your patience. So let's get into today's episode properly and I think it'd be a good place to start if I start with the or some of the giveaway winners from the last episode. I had two um, different giveaways, some were some patterns that were kindly uh, donated by Fat Quarter Shop and there was also the 7,000 subscriber giveaway. So I'm going to start with the Fat Quarter Shop prize winners first. So I've got the pile here and I'm going to try and go through them in the order that I read them out in. So the first one is for the Stitchy Stars cross stitch pattern. Um, this is a Laurie Holt design uh, published by It's So Emma and the winner of Stitchy Stars and I'll pop the, um, the little screen grab on the screen here for you now because I use the random YouTube comment picker. Uh, the winner of Stitchy Stars is Christine Bennett. So congratulations, Christine. The next one is the Prim Stitch Series. 
and it was welcoming and cheerful which is pattern number nine in the series and this has been won by Jennifer Manian. I hope I'm pronouncing that right Jennifer so congratulations to you the next one is the Stella quilt pattern and this has been won by Catherine Adrian so congratulations to you Catherine and the final pattern was the home sweet home again these are all published by it's so emma and um, donated to this floss tube by fat quarter shop and this has been won by kim j so congratulations to you kim so congratulations all you lovely winners um, and thank you for everyone that entered there were a huge amount of entries um, and i'm sorry i can't send you all a prize but there will be more giveaways in the future so if you're one of the winners of these charts please look in the description box underneath this video and you'll see my email address drop me an email with your um, mailing address and i'll get these sent out to you as soon as i can on to some stitching now i'm sure lots of you are aware of the stitch along that's been started by brenda and laura of Brenda and the Serial Starter Floss Tube, um, which is the Blackbird Designs Weekend Stitch Along. And that's running every first weekend of the month. Now I've seen so many wonderful posts on Instagram and on people's floss tubes, seeing so many people are jumping in on that. And of course I had to get in on the action too. So I made um, it an ideal opportunity, or took it as an opportunity to have a new start, which was for the Strawberry Fields forever by blackbird designs and i got a small start on this last weekend i was um yeah as i've mentioned with starting the new job I, my head was all over the place but it was just the thing to um get me a little bit more relaxed and prepared for that so i did make a start i'll just get my little board and let's pop this on here and show you I just got a small start on the border here this is the fabric I'm using is 36 count um, hand dyed linen by my friend Paula from Eva Faith um, she's on Etsy I will pop a link down below and you can see I didn't get very far but I made a start and that was what I, I wanted to make sure I at least got a start on it so I'm using all um, all DMC with the exception of the um, tin bucket from uh, Gentle Art because the equivalent was the blue there and I don't know if you can see that blue is a million miles away from the tin bucket so I've actually found that I did have it um, some of the Gentle Art tin bucket in my stash so just made a small start I'm stitching this uh, one strand over two on the 36 count and I love how neat that makes my stitches look but of course I have to use my magnifier when I'm stitching on this I did have a question actually um, that just does spring to mind as I'm speaking somebody had asked um, how I trained my eyes to move up from um, bigger count fabrics to smaller. I'm only up as far as sort of 36 count at the moment. I don't know if I'll be able to ever be able to manage 40 count, but it's just a case of, um, from my experience, very, very, very good light, um, magnification and practice. I think your eyes do become accustomed the more you do it. I do find that if I'm stitching on two different projects in the same sort of stitchy session, that I'd always be best to go from the higher count one first and then go to the, the lower count. So if I was doing the 36 count first and then it'd be okay for me to drop down to sort of a 28 count or a 32 count. But to go the other way, I think is, um, yeah, it, your, your eyes have got used to looking at the, the bigger sort of stitches. So um, yeah, but just lots of practice, really good light. I find that it's not something I'm as, it's not as easy for me if I'm tired. So make sure that you're not too tired, especially if you're, you know, trying the higher counts 
um, you know, for the first time. But that would be my sort of suggestion to, if you wanted to try high accounts, I mean, there is some of my favorite things are stitched on quite low count fabrics. So don't feel that you have to push yourself to stitch on higher count fabrics. You just need to find that sweet spot where you like the look of your stitching, you feel comfortable, it's not too much of a strain on your eyes um, because the last thing you want to do is make stitching um, anything less than a pleasure. So I hope that helps. Um, but if anybody else has got any hints or suggestions, then do pop it in the comments below because I'm sure lots of people would find that useful. So yes, that's my little start on um, strawberry fields forever and of course you know what's coming next if you're a, a long-term viewer it's anniversaries of the heart I did get a little bit more done on that during the blackbird designs weekend and I've actually finished the block for March which is this one here the house and the March hair and the crock of gold and all the little shamrocks in the border you can see i've popped justin's name on this one justin's birthday is in march so this is his block the only thing i haven't done yet is the over one um again going back to what i was just saying about doing um small accounts when you're you feel refreshed in your eyes and not tired um when i was doing this i'd got it was quite late and i really didn't want to attempt the over one and risk messing it up or giving myself a headache or so I'll go back to that at some point but I was pleased just to get the the March block finished so the next pattern that I will be doing is the Pink Hill Manor which you've all probably seen and I've got all my threads ready for that and I'm using almost all the cord for here mostly classic colour works and gentle arts you can see how pretty those are going to look so I really need to get started on that I'm not concerned but I'm sort of aware that with being back to work and not having sort of daytime stitchy time that I can't expect to get as much done as I had been when I wasn't working so I would like to still get a block done per month but I'm not going to beat myself up if I can't because, as I said, stitching is a, is a pleasure and I don't want to um, make it a chore and trying to sort of churn things out just to stick to a, a self-imposed schedule. So it will, I'll get a start on it and it will be done when it's done. And I think I just have to accept that that's, that's the way it's going to be. But it will be nice just to get a start on that block so that I can um, just pick it up and do a few do a few strands of floss here and there and it will all come good in the end so i hope you've all been joining in with the um the blackbird designs weekend stitch along i mean i know most of us um tend to have a blackbird on the go most of the time so but it's just nice to have that special weekend dedicated to it and of course um i know that brenda is is having a few um struggles at the moment and I do send her and I'm sure as you all do send her good wishes and, and thoughts for her to be um, back to her old self as soon as possible so sending lots of love to you Brenda. On my last episode I mentioned to you all that I'd been contacted by Sally from Caterpillar Cross Stitch and I had a little chat with you about the upcoming stitch along which is Hello Sunshine. Um, it's a stitch along that's starting on the 28th of May and it's a five part, so five monthly parts, all sent by PDF, and I shared some images then. Well, the exciting thing is that the um, Sally has kindly sent me a kit to show you all, and it arrived, and I'd like to show that to you now. So here is how the kit arrives. This is the full kit for Hello Sunshine. Um, it's got a really cute Carlos the Caterpillar here. You can see this has been um, blurred out, but if you've seen the others in the series, um, there are four trees for the four seasons, you get the gist of, of how the designs work. But this one obviously is all um, sunshine and sort of tropical theme. So this is how the full kit looks. 
and I'm going to show you what came in the kit. Just move the, the plastic. So the first thing that you get is instructions and a colour key. Now the instructions, um, if you're a seasoned cross stitcher, you probably won't need to refer to these. But if you're a beginner, and this is a perfect kit to start if you are um, a beginner to cross stitch, this is invaluable information. This just runs through um, uh, preparing your fabric, um, how to refer to the colour key here for the symbols and colours and the um, shades of DMC thread that they refer to. It also gives you some instructions on how to form your cross stitches. Now this uh, PDF stitch along is all four crosses. So if you are a beginner, it's perfect. There are no specialty stitches, no back stitching, no part stitches, you know, fractional stitches, halves or quarters or anything like that. It's all four crosses. So really achievable if you are starting out. So that comes in the kit. Of course, you get your fabric and it's all Zweigart fabric. So I have opted for a 28 count even weave, but you can choose from even weave or Ada. Um, they're all Zweigart and you can choose 14 count Ada, 16 count Ada or 28 count even weave. So as I said, I've gone for the even weave option. You even get a DMC needle and I believe these are sent in the size that corresponds to the fabric that you've chosen and super excitingly which is always my favorite part is the thread so you have 14 shades of DMC thread all pre-sorted onto these you can see there he is again little Carlos the caterpillar all pre-sorted onto these thread cards so you can choose to um, keep them on here and of course you do have your colour key to refer to when you get part one of the chart you've got the colour key to refer to for your threads or you can pop them onto little individual bobbins or you can put them onto thread drops however it makes you feel the most comfortable and how you like to stitch I think um, you could even if you wanted to you could probably just cut across and they'd be on their own individual bobbins if you wanted to do it like that and you've got a little space to put your partially um, used threads or strands in at the end there so super duper easy and organized which is if you're an organization freak like me then that's what you love you can see the colors are absolutely stunning i hope it's picking up here rather fitting with my little palm behind me um, but you can see how stunning these colors are and being dmc they're all color fast um, you could even you know give you a piece of gentle wash at the end when you finish because dmc threads are completely color fast so those are the threads as well not part of the kit but also as an add-on you can get in this super cute little pouch the matching needle minder and just look at the gorgeous little toucan needle minder so so pretty it's all enamel it's got the really strong magnet back so that it will stay on your piece keep your needle nice and safe and the colors have all been carefully coordinated with the floss colours as well. So you've got your super cute needle minder as well. So I think it's such an exciting, well put together kit. Um, as I mentioned, if you buy, um, okay, so let me just tell you a little bit about Caterpillar Cross Stitch and how you can order it. If you want to take part in the stitch along, um, you, it starts on the 28th of May, as I mentioned, that will be when part one is released. I have got a code that will give you 10% off a full kit purchase and I'll pop it on the bottom of the screen here. It's Bumble 10. So you go along to Caterpillar Cross Stitch. I'll put links for all this in the description box down below. 
when you go to Caterpillar Cross Stitch website to order your kit, you'll find it's really simple to select the option that you want. There is a drop down menu and you can, from, that, from those choices in the drop down, you can choose your fabric, you can choose if you want to add on a needle minder um, and the options go right from just ordering the PDF um, pattern or the full kit. Now, I would always go for the full kit because it's just so refreshing to get everything you need all in one hit and you don't have to worry about trying to find all the threads or trying to find the right fabric and get yourself organized in advance because it's all there for you as you saw in the kit. The code I gave you earlier is valid until the 27th of May, so you've still got a um, chance to hop over and get that for yourself. And if you are um, a non-UK customer, there's a handy currency converter, so you can see at a glance how much that's going to cost you. The other thing I would recommend doing is if you subscribe to Sally's um, Caterpillar Cross Stitch newsletter, you also get a free um, ebook that has six free cross stitch patterns as well. So I'm looking forward to the 28th when part one of the pattern will land and I can get stitching on that. And as soon as I do that, I will be sharing it all with you. Okay, I'm going to move on now to my stitch mania. So I'll just grab all my things and I'll be right back. I've got all my Lori Holt mania. Um, I mentioned on the last episode that my mania is going to be all lorry hole patterns. I absolutely love stitching them and I thought it'd be a really nice way to do mania. So I've popped everything that I'm working on or that I plan to work on in this big dotty bag, which is a bee in my bonnet um, bag that you can get from Fat Quarter Shop or any of their stockists. And I'll show you what I've been working on. First thing I'd like to share with you is that I got my flea market flowers bag made. I was lamenting um, quite a lot actually in the last episode that my sewing machine was in for um, a bit of TLC and it still isn't back but my lovely mum came to the rescue and brought her sewing machine for me to use while mine is away and I managed to get my bag made. So I got my quilting done this is the flea market flowers um, cheetah print so I quilted it all over just a sort of like a diamond pattern I was attempting to do some free motion all around these shapes but that went a bit horribly wrong so I unpicked that and just carried on um, and kept it simple and I actually prefer it I popped on a little flea market flowers charm and a little bit of rickrack and I've lined it with the the low volume sort of backing fabric from the same range. So that is something that I got done that I was very pleased about. But let's show you some actual stitching. The first thing that I did in this one, this bag here that I made from Laurie's um, Farm Girl Vintage, I can't remember if it was one or two um, books, is the stitch cards and I'll show you them so it was stitch card set H and I started with a little moo cow or milk cow milk cow not moo cow and because these are such a nice quick stitch I managed to get her stitched up and done and she is so super cute I sat and did this yesterday afternoon really enjoyed it I'm doing it on this sort of oatmeal color Ada this is a 14 count Ada it lends itself really really nicely to these little stitch cards again if you're a beginner you can't go wrong to start with something like this I'm using all the cord for DMC there's all my cord for DMC really pretty and I'm going to work my way through those stitch cards and they're a handy little sort of project that I can do without magnification um, so if I want to take it if I'm out and about lunchtime at work that sort of thing um, I can work on some of those so that was a new start I was really pleased to get one of those started another new start and it's living in this is a little um, knitting project bag that I've repurposed because shock I've actually run out of project bags um, 
from Little Taylor S, but really cute colours, vintage which I thought would be perfect with Laurie's patterns. And this one is the Eat, Sleep, Stitch, Repeat pattern. And I've done it in some colours that will hopefully tie in with this Laurie Holt fabric. You can see I've only got a small start here. Just started on the first two. I was doing this lunchtime the other day after um, I'd eaten my lunch and I had some time left so I thought I'd do a little bit of stitching at lunchtime just to get my stitchy fix. So yeah I thought that would work really well and I can make another project bag once I've stitched that little pattern up. And again I'm using all um, DMC. I haven't, these are all my old style bobbins. I just sort of threw them in. All good to go. But they coordinate nicely with this um, with this fabric so I thought that would work really really well so that was another start my mania plans have kind of gone out of the window I did sit and plan everything out how many days I would do on each project the new starts and the existing whips and of course with um, being back to work it's all gone out of the window a little bit but it's it's still all good because I'm just picking these up of an evening or as I said I can throw this one in my work bag um, and just get a little bit of, you know even if I do a few stitches that's that just chills me out at lunchtime um, clears my head ready for the afternoon and all those little stitches add up don't they and the final bit of actual stitching on my Laurie Hulk projects is on my prim stitch series so I will show this to you and the pattern that I'm working on And again, I am quite behind with this, but I did manage to get the the main body of stitching done for block number, what is it, one, two, three, four, five, um, and make a start on block six. So really enjoying the colours of that one. And what I've done is, let me just show you the pattern for that one. It's home and hearth. So I'm just starting work on the, the house there. And what I've done, just excuse me leaning, I'm using all the called for um, Aurifil flosses and I've popped them all in my little rope basket that was a gift from my lovely friend Jules of So Sweet Violet. And it's just handy just to pop all those lovely little wooden spools in there, plus they just look so pretty. So I've just pulled all the colours that that chart requires for, this, um, for that block and popped them in and then when I move on to the next one I'll just make sure I've got all the all the threads ready for that as well so that is such a relaxing stitch again I don't need magnification for that one this is on the 25 count Lugana so it makes it a little bit easier on the eye um, which has been welcome because I've had so much computer work to do um, that I haven't been sort of used to doing so it's nice to have something that isn't too um, too hard on my eyes in the evening so that's all the stitching that I've done for my mania. I did want to get some work on my whips, um, but I think I'll make those my focus for this evening and into next week. So I'll work on through some of my whips. Um, okay, shall we do the 7,000 subscriber giveaway prize? I think that's, I'd like to get that um, announced because I'm quite excited about that. So let me just grab the prize. So we had, if you can all remember, sorry about the scrunching of the bag. So we had the wonderful Winter Rose Manor chart, which is from Brenda Gervais with Thy Needle and Thread. And as I mentioned, it's got the main sampler. It also gives you instructions for this beautiful, small little pin keep or box top, which is very pretty. Um, this was donated by a lovely viewer. I've thrown in a skein of the Weeks Dye Work thread, which is the one used, called for, for the main part of the house. And of course, the project bag with the roses on, which I thought would be a perfect place to keep 
the project. So enough waffling, who is the winner? There were a lot of entries for this. Thank you all so much for your interest and thank you for your words of um, congratulations for hitting 7,000 subscribers. You, you're all absolutely amazing, thank you. So the winner of the bag, the chart and the floss is Lorna Buffy. So congratulations, Lorna. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I hope you enjoy stitching the chart and using the bag and thank you to everyone that entered for that giveaway. But Lorna, if you can contact me on the email in the description box below and I will get your prize sent out to you. I've got some items of haul that I'd like to share with you next. Um, I didn't think I had much to share with you, but when I put it all together, it's probably more than I was expecting, but it's all good fun, isn't it? First thing, and you'll all be hugely relieved to know that I have finally got my chart for flea market flowers. I ordered this from So Hot UK and it arrived just a couple of days ago. So now that I have got my bag that I showed you earlier and my pattern and I've got all my flosses inside and my fabric, I am good to go. So I think this might be a new start for this week to carry on with my Laurie Holt mania. But it's such a relief to get the pattern. I know so many people are stitching it. It's amazing every time I see it pop up on Instagram or on a floss tube, I was just itching to get started on this. So I think this might have to happen later on today. I think while the video's uploading, I think I'll get started on this and it goes perfectly with my bag. So that makes me very happy indeed. So that was a lovely and very welcome um, arrival in the post the other day. On the same day, from my lovely friend Paula at Eva Faith, I got this piece of 36 count linen in straw. I'm just trying to see if I've got my board handy. I can't see it. Hopefully you can see. If I fold it over, the light might not go through it so much. You can see the colour isn't true there. It's it's more of a it's got more of a yellowy sort of straw sort of cast to it. Is that more? It's really difficult in this light. Beautiful. Paula's dyeing is fantastic, and I love her fabric. You can find her on Etsy as Eva Faith, and. Follow her on Instagram as well. I'll pop her handle down below um, because she will update on Instagram. I'll let you know when she's doing a shop update because the fabric does go really, really quickly. I was lucky to, to grab this piece. So that's going into stash, ready for something gorgeous at some point. And I received the next part of the Prim Stitch series. And this is number 10, Love and Friendship and Prim is a 12 part series, so we are getting near to the end. Obviously I'm a bit behind with stitching of it, but nearly got all of the patterns. And you can see this super cute little kitty on there, and I'm going to change that kitty to look like Bruce, who spends quite a bit of time with us now, and I'm gonna change the colors so that it looks like him. So I'm excited to get to that one. And I also made a couple of little quilty purchases. In fact, one of the things I did do was when I got um, the notification that I'd been hired for my new job, I celebrated with a fabric order because that's the automatic thing that I can think of to do is um, I think other people would go out and, I don't know, perhaps buy champagne or you know something else, treat themselves to something else. But I thought, oh, I'm gonna place an order for some quilty fabric. So that's what I did. I'd had my eye on for a while, um, the Notting Hill range, which is a Riley Blake range. And particularly for this quilt pattern, the Regent Street Union Jacks. I really love this. We seem to, um, although this is obviously, um, well, I'm, assuming that Amy Smart of Diary of a Quilter is actually in the States, um, or is it Australia? I should have researched that, but I don't think she's British. And I th it's, it always amazes me that we have a, such a lack of patriotic pieces in the UK. We don't seem to have many um, patriotic cross stitch pieces or quilting pieces or anything like that. So when I saw this, I thought I must make it and I fell in love with the Notting Hill fabric line. 
this pattern actually I downloaded as a PDF from Diary of a Quilter. You can buy it as a hard copy as well. So that's the pattern and these are the fabrics. They are gorgeous. Um, this is the Fat Quarter Bundle. And you can see all those colours in there, the pinks, yellows, greens, blues, and then obviously the red, white and blue. So super, super pretty. I love Riley Blake fabrics. And then I've got a huge pile here, which is all the all the rest of the fabric that I need for the quilt. So I've got everything for the, um, the cornerstones, um, sashing, I think is this one, which is the super cute little Union Jacks. Love that fabric. And then the main borders, which are this rose print, which is beautiful. You can see is all around there. I've completely taken all the fabric choices from, from the pattern. And then the blue check will be for the binding. And I've got the backing fabric as well. So all I need to do is get the batting. And it's this gorgeous blush pink um, with all the scenes of London on it. So, so exciting. I think it's going to make a really pretty quilt. I'm going to go for the throw size, which I don't have the dimensions of here. But it's still a considerable size quilt. And I think it's going to be really fun to make. So that was my little treat to myself um, for getting my new job. So very exciting to receive all that. And the final piece of haul that I wanted to share with you is another one of the Laurie Holt books. This is an older one, I believe. This is Quilty Fun. Um, and I was aware of this because Laurie's doing her um, red and white sampler quilt, uh, quilt along at the moment. And the blocks are drawn from several of her books. And I know this one was referenced. So I got this one, but there are some amazing blocks in here. You can see all, obviously all the ones the quilt on the front. I'm loving these apples and the cups and the mittens and spools. Everything is just amazing there. But there's something that I really want to make in here and I'll see if I can flick to it. I mean, just look at those apples on there. So, so cute. Um, let me see if I can find this. I should have put a little sticky note in. Um, just bear with, speak among yourselves while I'm looking for this. Here it is. It's the sewing machine cover and mat. Is there a bigger picture of it? I don't think there is. So there you go. It's really cute. It's a obviously a mat to put your sewing machine on. This piece here with the spools is a little pocket so you can put little notions, your seam ripper, bits and pieces like that in. And I think you can put ties on as well so that you can actually put it over your sewing machine and make um, stop it getting dusty when you're not using it. So here's a picture of it here. So you can see how cute is that? And of course, look at the lovely little featherweight. So really happy to have received that book. I have no idea when I'm going to find the time to do all the quilting that I want to do and all the stitching, but I'm sure it will all work itself out um, as the weeks go on and I'll get used to managing my time in a different way than I have been. So I think that is everything for today. I will be back in two weeks time and hopefully I've got enough things, enough content to share with you. If it turns out that I'm not having enough time to um, sort of create things and share with you, I might have to think about pushing the floss tube back to every three weeks, but we'll see. Um, as I said, hopefully I'll get back into my groove really, really soon um, and have plenty to share with you all. So I will leave you all there and I hope you have a lovely stitchy time. If you're one of my winners, please don't forget to contact me and I will see you all in two weeks time. Take care, bye.